John Workington here from the Michaels Camera social media team. As you can see, I'm seated here in Michaels Camera World Famous Camera Museum. I'm uh, surrounded by cameras and I've got a complete table full of cameras as well. But let's cut to the chase. Why are we here? We've got the brand new Fuji GFX 50S. Now this is a digital, mirrorless, medium format camera. I'm excited about it. I think you're going to be very excited about it as well. So what I wanted to do was give you a little bit of a size comparison and just a very, very quick overview of this camera. Most important part of this thing is this is medium format that is manageable in one hand and it's just like a little bit more of grown up version of all the other Fuji cameras. If you're familiar with the Fuji X-T series, you're going to be right at home with this camera. As a matter of fact, I was up and running shooting pictures within five minutes of getting this camera into my hand. It's that easy to use. You've got top mounted dial right here for the ISO, top mounted dial right here for the shutter speed, and the beautiful Fuji lenses which have on the barrel of the lenses your aperture ring. So here we are here. I'll just try to show this to the camera. Beautiful smooth control to take your aperture, in this case on the 32 to 64 mil zoom from f4 all the way down to f32. And they just feel beautiful in the hand. This is an extremely easy large camera. When I say large is in high resolution and large format is in, it's got a big sensor in it. They refer to it as medium, but anyway. Um, this is really easy to use. It feels good in the hand. It's not that heavy. And as you can see, and this is why I've got all these other cameras here, it's really not all that large. So what sort of person might be interested in this camera? Well, anybody who really wants to take their photography to the next level. You've got 50 megapixels of finely detailed information coming off this sensor. So, what, you might be coming from the world of Canon. So here's the Canon, uh, well this is the new Canon 5D Mark IV, but most of the 5D series camera, but Canon bodies are all the same size, and that's got Canon's 24 to 70 mm lens. So, let's compare these two. Let me just sort of hold this thing here. I'll put the Fuji in this hand, I'll put the camera in this hand. So, we'll hold them up. Not a heck of a lot of difference in the length of them. Let's hold the two bodies together here. I'll do them back to back like this. As you can see, not a lot of difference in the, uh, the width of the bodies and in the depth. Maybe the back display on the Fuji's a little bit more. Uh, in the hand, I really can't tell the difference together in the weight. So let's compare this to Nikon's full film offering. Now this is the 36 megapixel D810 with their new 24 to 70 mm lens, which as you can see, the Nikon lens is a little bit longer than the Canon. Actually, it's quite a bit longer. Again, weight's pretty well similar. And here we have it with the Fuji. So you're not paying a penalty to go to medium format with the new Fuji GFSX, GFX 50S. It's right around the same size as your existing full frame digital SLRs. And uh, any of the other manufacturers full frame offerings are all about the same size. And of course, you can even get larger in full frame if you want to go to the 1D series bodies with Canon. This is dramatically larger than the Fuji. And of course, there's professional photographers going around doing their job all day long carrying these cameras. So this is not unmanageable. Now, medium, film, medium format from yesteryear was like this. Now that is big. So this is an old Pentax 645, I believe. And uh, I'm not even sure what the lens is on this. I haven't even looked at it. I'm not even going to concern myself with that. But notice the difference in size here. Of course, these old film cameras, they had a mirror box in them. These are single lens reflex cameras. So we compare, again, the sizes here. And this is a lot heavier. So you can see that uh, Fuji's mirrorless technology has miniaturized the camera and made it much, much easier to use. This is a beast to hold. This is, uh, the ergonomics are not so great on this old film camera. Whereas the Fuji just feels great in the hand. Oh, there's a huge difference in weight when you just put the one down and the other up. I mean, I could easily walk around all day with this. Uh, it just feels so good. You've got a joystick on the back here so that you can get, uh, move around the images. You've got touch screen. Uh, that's actually, I don't even know if I can take a picture. I don't think I have a memory card in this. Unfortunately, I can't take a picture quite now with it. I can probably shoot something and maybe bring it up on the screen. Oh, it does show up. I think I can zoom in. Uh, maybe not. I think because it's not in the memory card, I can't zoom in. Uh, let's take a look at the sensor. So I'm just going to quickly turn it off and pop the lens off. And there we are. 
So there's a brand new G mount on this camera, and as you can see, as you look inside, there's a very large sensor. Uh, we can compare that to our full frame 35 mil format sensor. Uh, I don't have a mirrorless camera. Maybe we need to turn one of these on here. Let's uh, quickly put this camera into bulb mode. And we will pop the shutter up. So there's the Canon's mount and looking inside the mirror box of it and you can see that the Fuji sensor is dramatically larger. Whereas the Canon camera sensor is 36 millimeters across, the Fuji's is 44 millimeters across. So bigger sensor means larger photo sites, which means more light gathering ability for each of those photo sites and smoother, better uh, gradations in your pictures and higher dynamic range. The proof is in the pudding. I've been shooting quite a few test shots with the Fuji camera and I'm really blown away with the amount of dynamic range in the files and of course with the quality of the lenses. Now I'm just going to put on the 63 mil. This is basically a 50 mil in Fuji's terms. The, there's a crop factor for these cameras, but it's the reverse of what we normally are used to with you know smaller format 35 mil style digital SLRs. The crop factor to get your effective focal length from the Fuji is 0.79. So this 63 mil lens, it's a 2.8 uh, speed lens, that works out to approximately 50 mil. So this is your normal lens. Now that's a little bit smaller than the zoom, it weighs a bit less. And now this is extremely easy to handhold. So this would be sort of your average, uh, you know, your street shooting sort of scenario if you'd like a 50 mil. Now there are some wider lenses coming uh, down the pipeline and there are also image stabilized lens. So that brings up the 120 mil macro f4. So this is your macro lens and a portrait lens all in one. And this is image stabilized. Again, not that heavy in the hand. This lens, I would venture to say, weighs less than the Nikon 24 to 70. But with a superb image stabilization system, you're going to be able to get away with longer shutter speeds handheld. Uh, the reports I'm reading is it's easily good to four stops. And that's important because at the longer focal lengths, any vibration from your hand holding is going to affect your pictures. And of course, with a 50 megapixel sensor, it's even more important to have the camera very, very stable. So having a 120 mil lens that is stabilized is really going to enable you to shoot rock solid handheld portraiture, even in challenging light. Now, challenging light brings up another interesting point. The high ISO capabilities of this camera are incredible. I've been shooting around the store, just under the ambient light in the store, you know, the fluorescent fittings, halogens, what have you. And I've got a lot of shots that have been at ISO 2000. And when I'm looking at these things at pixel depth, like 100% zoomed in in Lightroom on my screen, they're looking like ISO 100 shots from my Canon 5D Mark III. They're just beautiful, clean files, and they sharpen up so well. I've had a chance to do some lens testing to compare the Nikon 24-70 on the D810, the Canon 24-70 on the 5DSR, keep in mind this is the Mark IV, but on the 5DSR, to the Fuji with the 32 to 64. So I've gone through the complete aperture range looking at some cityscapes from the roof of Michael's cameras. We're going to share some of these results with you very soon. But I just want to give you a little capsule of explanation of what I've seen. The Fuji lens and the zoom, that's the only one I've done this very detailed testing with. The Fuji lens has very, very low distortion, much straighter vertical lines than the Canon and the Nikon offerings. The Fuji lens has next to no chromatic aberration. I'm seeing a fair bit of purple fringing, uh, purple and green fringing in the edges of both Canon and Nikon's top tier 24 to 70s. It's very noticeable. It is correctable in Lightroom uh, and any other major raw converter, but wouldn't you rather have a lens that doesn't have any of these chromatic aberrations to begin with? I'd rather not have to correct distortion and, and CA in software. I'd rather have a lens that's just perfect from the get-go. Lastly, corner shading or vignetting as it's often called. Um, the Fuji lens from F4, as I start stopping down, I'm not seeing much of a change at all in corner uh, uh, shading. Whereas on the Canon and the Nikon, I'm seeing a fair bit. So right off the bat, we've got less distortion, less edge, shade, ed edge and corner shading, um, minimal chromatic aberration, I shouldn't even say minimal, next to none, and lastly, sharpness into the edges. The Fuji lens is superb in the edges. 
I'm, I'm just really blown away with it. I'm looking forward to sharing some of these files uh, with you because um, it's just a, a whole new game to have 50 megapixels in an affordable, hand-holdable package that you can just use like a regular camera and get superb results. I think uh, it's something that uh, people are going to want to come into Michael's camera, hold it in your hand, take a look at some of the sample files that we're going to share. There's already a few on our Facebook group, the Michael's We Can Help group. There's going to be more from these, these uh, aperture range tests that I've done. Basically, what I've done is I've gone up and I've taken a picture of the landscape and I've shot the exact same exposure from f4 to f6 to f8 to f11, f16, f22, and f32. And I've done the exact same thing at the widest settings on all three of these cameras. And that's a great way to get to know the capabilities of a lens and camera combination. It's something I do every time I buy new equipment. I want to get to know how these things behave in a real world sort of scenario. So I take a picture of a cityscape. Usually there's buildings with sharply defined windows and brickwork and sometimes there's wires. So it's a, it's a great way to do it. So I'm, I'm very excited to uh, share some of these results. Now I've got a few other things on the table that I want to show you. Uh, like almost every modern camera, the Fuji does have an optional grip with it. So you can mount this. I, actually, let's just see here. I'll, uh, I'll put it on. I haven't done this yet, but I'll just try it out. So there's a little port on the bottom of the camera here, and then the grip lines up. Let's just do that. Uh, oh, got to take this off. There's a cover on the grip as well. There we go. Problem solved. A little alignment pin here and here. And where is our screw? Ah, here's the screw. There we go. Might add, this grip does not weigh much. The batteries are very beefy on the Fuji, so I think you're going to see spectacular life. I've had no problems with it running out of charge. And uh, this is not adding an awful lot to the weight at all. Now, I don't think there's a battery in the grip, but the batteries aren't that heavy. They're lithium ion. But for the portrait shooter, this is going to be spectacular. Now, this brings up some other interesting questions. The Fuji LCD on this camera is tiltable. Pulls out, goes in, so you can use this waist level like so. But also, it tilts in the alternate orientation, like so. So you can use it in portrait mode. Now, why is that important? The aspect ratio of the files on medium format cameras, like uh, even like this old film camera, is a little bit different than a 35mm format camera. These are 3-4 aspect ratios. They are very pleasing when used in portrait mode. Now normally when you shoot in vertical or portrait mode with a 35mm format camera and your intention is a print, you usually have to crop the file to another more pleasing aspect ratio. So you're throwing away a little bit of your resolution. If you're working with portraiture with a camera like this, you're already at a very ple uh, pleasing aspect ratio. There's no need to cut the file down top or bottom. So all those 50 megapixels are there for your fine art vertical orientation printing needs. We haven't had a chance to print anything out yet, but uh, I've got uh, high expectations and I'm sure it's going to meet and exceed these things. Uh, I have no doubt in my mind that we can probably do A0 prints or larger and they'll look spectacular. So hopefully we'll have something like that to show soon. I also want to uh, put this camera on my panoramic head and do some photo mosaics with it and really take the resolution to the extreme. So that, that's all in the pipeline as well. So uh, I've got a fair bit uh, to uh, be excited about. And lastly, if you're at Michael's camera tomorrow on Saturday, March the 18th, we'll have the representative from Fuji here. Uh, so you have a chance to get some hands-on uh, play with the camera and speak to the expert. So I'm going to sign off now. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in person at Michael's camera. And uh, we're excited about the Fuji GFX, uh, sorry, GFX 50S. And uh, we think you will be too. So uh, hopefully you will enjoy our YouTube videos. And you can come in person and you can have a play with this camera. Take care and we'll see you next time.